Hello Mac Warriors and welcome to a new episode of the build of the week. So some of you wanted to see another Archer build and that's what we are going to do today. We go for LM20s and no, 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 no worries. We won't do the whole sitting back and uh, firing LRMs from cover thing. We are going to do a short range, long range missile thing today. Uh, yeah, does that make sense? I don't know. So what I'm trying to do is to make the LRM-20 work. And the only way to make the LRM-20 work is to put an Artemis onto it. And the only way to make Artemis effective is to have true line of sight. And that's what we're going to do today. Um, we go into mid-range, look at the opponent and lure the hell out of them. But before we begin, I have a quick side note. Um, I've got, again, two games which I found worthwhile watching. And um, yeah, I'm not sure if this is uh, something you like or not. So please let me know if the length of the video is okay for you. Um, just leave a comment and tell me if you rather like one video which is more tightened up. Oh no, not one video, but one game. Um, or if you like to have two videos uh, which show yeah, more, more variety of what the build is about. Okay, then uh, let's quickly jump into the Mac Lab and see what I put into it. I chose the Archer 2R for this build because he has the best quirks for LRMs and yeah, since we are going for an LRM build here, I think that's a good idea. So we've got 10% on the heat, 10% on the velocity and 15% on the cooldown. That's not a crazy amount, but we'll take it anyway. And as you can see, we've got uh, two LRM-20 with Artemis. Of course, these are our main weapons and um, we back them up with four medium lasers and a shitload of ammo. So that's nothing special so far. But we've got an XL300 built into this baby and it brings us to a nice speed of about 75 kph, which is crucial for our playstyle. We need to be in the middle of the fights and we need to be fast for it. We have to keep up with the pace of our team and provide support fire when it's needed. And speaking of mobility, um, the most important thing about this build is the tag laser. This one enables the whole playstyle. But more of that in a second. You may have noticed that I put a Beagle Active probe into the mech. I guess it's kind of redundant to the tag laser, but I, to be honest with you, I had no idea what to do with my last two slots. I could have put more ammunition into it, but I think this amount is just okay. But yeah. Why not? Now we are prepared for the rare occasion when our tech laser is destroyed. Mm. Uh, if you have any ideas what to do with the last two slots and um, 1.5 or 2 tons of weight, let me know. Just leave a comment. Really, I had no idea. So let's have a quick look at the modules before we begin with the first game. Okay, advanced target decay, of course, it's an auto include in an LRM build. We need to hold the target 3 seconds longer than normal. Very good if they try to hide. Uh, we've got LRM20 cooldown module. We don't have the range module because we want to be a close range, long range missile, boat, whatever. Uh, but instead we got a medium laser cooldown module which helps a lot when they are closing in on us. And on the consumables we have an UAV and a cool shot because this baby runs hot so fast. So let's try to work around it. And that's the mech. That's what it's all about. So it's time to hit the battlefield. Alright, we are on Polar Highlands, which is a very good map for LRMs. And before the shooting begins, I will give you some theory. So let's start with the Artemis. Okay, as I already mentioned before, you need line of sight to get all the bonuses. Which are a 50% bonus on the target lock time, a 50% bonus on the tracking strength, and a 66% reduced missile spread. I guess lock on time and missile spread are easy to understand, but what the fuck is tracking strength? Basically tracking strength is the ability for a missile to follow a moving target, so it is able to fly tighter curves and is more adaptive to yeah, changes of direction. Yeah, that was the Artemis, but we've also got the tag laser and that provides us another bonus of 50% on the tracking strength. Uh, decreases missile lock on time by 50% and we've got a 25% bonus on the target decay. Yeah, and on top of that it also counters ECM. So, good thing to have. Um, the best thing about it is that it stacks with the Artemis, so if we are looking at the opponent anyway, 
yeah, why not take a tech and our teams together? So that's what we're going to do and I show you how it works out. All right, okay, our plan here is to walk with our team and as I said before, we want to be in the middle of the fight. Oh, that was close. Whew. Yeah, again, um, this build is about fast locks and long DK. So what we are doing now is we walk with our team and we try to establish a line of sight. But keep in mind, we are still in LRM mode and we can fire indirectly at any point. So if you have the chance, just do it and get your team an advantage by removing some armor. Of course, the damage will spread a bit more, but don't push yourself too much into a single playstyle. So, adapt to the game and do what you can. So, there's some ECM going around there and we are trying to disable it with our tag. Um, fortunately, they hide behind that hill now, but that's okay. Um, we just fire at that warhammer over there. The good thing is, you can counter ECM with your tag laser, lock on very fast and you have a very good target decay so that at least one volley will arrive its target. You see? This time even two volleys arrived. And apparently there are some assault mechs in our flank. Yeah, and um, of course they are our priority targets. Um, removing 100 trons from the game is a big deal, so let's go for it and keep the line of sight if we can. And take a look at our position now. This is the sweet spot where we want to be. We have our assault mechs in front and we are directly okay, behind them. Destroyed. So let's move up a bit okay. and um, yeah, focus the next one down. Another good thing about the close range is that your enemy has less reaction time. Uh, if he gets the missile warning, the missiles are already hitting its cockpit. So um, yeah, try to be in about yeah 300, 400 meters. Um, <laughs> so that you have enough time to back up if they are closing on you. Okay, that Marauder is down and we are converging to the next target. And again, um, don't mind shooting indirectly, it's totally okay. Just move up, try to get line of sight again and then fire your missiles. After all, we are an LRM carrier, so why not shooting them? Um, yeah, at that point of the game we are a bit too far ahead and pulling back now. Because the enemy has now seen what we are doing and our team is a okay. bit falling behind. So let's get into cover again. Mm, but still, um, even in this position we can try to keep up the line of sight. And yeah, as you can see this build is pretty hot. So when you reach a point where you are at max heat and you just can't stop firing, then mm, you are in a bad position. I already used my cool shot, but I still want to keep the pressure going. And um, yeah, I have to be a bit more careful with that. So let's move on to the next target. Um, by the way, here I got an emergency call from a unit buddy. And I have to drive off this channel really quick. Okay, now we can focus the timber wolf again. And at that point I am switching to lasers now because I've almost consumed all of my ammo and this timber wolf is pushing me hard. So here I shut down again, which is terrible, but luckily I was saved by a team member. Okay, that Marauder is down to one. No, he has no weapons anymore, so it's not a big deal shutting down here. And he is dead anyway. I guess at that point we've pretty much won. Um, there's only this one little general there. And we give him another volley of our LRMs. And here comes the last one. Okay. And down he goes. Yeah, well played team. And we ran out of ammo just at the right time. Okay, before we get into the next game, let's have a quick look at the end screen. Um, see how much damage we dealt. Okay, we've got one kill, 11 assists and 985 damage. Oh, that's good. That's, that's a really nice number. And I guess, yes, we did top damage in this game. So, uh, yeah, let's jump directly into the next game. All right, uh, this time we are on Grim Plexus and I skipped forward a bit because uh, I wanted to get into the action more quickly. So let's activate our attack and find out where the enemy is. Here they come. 
All right. Give that hunchback some LRM volleys. And he's pretty much suiciding here, because we have some LRMs on our side, and he's pretty far ahead. I guess he wanted to drop that uh, artillery strike here. Um, but now he's dead. Oh boy. So I already described the concept of the build in the first game, and we are doing the exact same thing now. We are getting line of sight, we are hiding behind cover and our assault max, and we are raining LRMs on the enemy. It's just that simple. Um, the problem is that our attack laser only has 750 meters, so I can't get into range for that. Um, it's uh, actually kind of a big deal, because our lock-on time is now a bit reduced and our tracking strength and the target decay. But I don't want to risk being shot at and staying back a bit. The most important thing though is that we don't stop firing. LRM carriers are meant to give an early advantage and that is what we are going to do now. We are constantly removing armor from the enemies and um, yeah, getting an advantage for our team. So the brawl later will be easier for us. And that's generally a good thing to keep in mind in every situation. Uh, if you have an advantage like we have now, make use of it. I've already seen some games where we were ahead uh, by four kills and no one was pushing. And we lost that game in the end, because the enemy made some flanking maneuvers, they uh, yeah, used high ground or whatever, and they just focused us down. Um, so, and now we are going a bit forward, um, because we want to force this situation. We want to show our team, come on, it's not a big deal, the enemy is low in armor, and we are more than them. So let's tighten the field up, so they see on the minimap that there's some movement going on. And also we want to get to, uh, into range for our attack. Uh, unfortunately, this one is too far away. Um, New target acquired. Okay, here we go. And this, by the way, is a very good situation for us. We've got an enemy at very close range who is hiding behind a piece of cover and he has nothing he can do. Uh, we are firing above that thing and yeah, he can't get out because if he would, then this would happen. We've got our whole team as backup and we can easily focus him down. Because, hey, he has no armor left. Yeah, I guess we did a pretty good job here. And um, almost all of our ammo is gone. We've got only two shots left. Okay. This one goes to the hill. Um, yeah, let's fire at this one there. Alright, we're down to four medium lasers and attack. Okay, the tech won't heal any damage, but it's still helpful for our bodies, because they have plenty of LRMs left, hopefully. Um, what we do now is we just do what dudes with medium lasers do. We go in and shoot at people. Um, I guess there was a Marauder there. Okay, that one is down. Use the Jester. Yeah. See how easily they die. We just go in, fire at them. And down they go. It's a big deal. Um, yeah, as I said before, removing armor is crucial and it's our main job in the early game, so don't hesitate to fire our LRMs, even indirectly. If you can, just do it. Because, again, it gives you an advantage and you can make use of it later. So there are only four of them left and I guess they are a bit spread and they did not manage to kill any one of our team. So I guess that's a good round here. Um, yeah, but we are quite okayish with our speed, so we can try to hunt them down. Um, yeah, there is someone in the center, let's go to him, because he's much closer. Mm, let's see if we can get some shots in with our medium lasers here. Okay, it's the Marauder. And, uh, yeah, he has nothing he can do. We we'll just get focused down by pretty much everybody. And He's destroyed, okay. Um, for those of you who didn't notice, um, my actual speed, uh, max speed, is uh, 69 kph, which isn't the 75 I mentioned before, because this game was recorded before I got the speed tweak. So yeah, there is a little bit of a difference here. Uh, for those of you who are interested, um, I do the whole MacLab introduction after I record the game, so that's the point here. But anyway, 
Uh, I like this build very much. It's actually my favorite LRM build at the moment because um, with short lock on time and a long target decay you can make a lot happen. You could even play a peaking LRM boat if you want. Just pop out, lock your enemy, fire a missile and get back again. But this game is over and we are having a quick look at the end screen. And let's see how much damage we dealt. Okay, this time it was 2 kills, 9 assists and 60, 169 damage. That's not that much as in the first game, but still quite okay. And yeah, we got 2 kills and managed to not die. So that was the LRM20 Archer with Artemis and Tech and Beagle Active Probe. And if you liked the video, just leave a comment, leave a rating and tell me what I should play next. See you next time. Goodbye.